Right now, what we're going to do for a few minutes, if anybody got anything they want to say before I run on my So, I guess uh, <clears throat> you say now the time. Say what? Did you say now the time when anybody can talk? Yeah. Okay, let me just say, Doug, that we loved your mom and dad. They were our, our neighborhood family. I met you in grammar school and have known them ever since, which has been 60 years or longer. And all these neighborhood boys, Tommy and Joey and Ron and Denny, uh, Marlon, I know I'm missing some, but we had a group of boys that, man, played ball together, done everything together. <clears throat> we had a good time, we grew up together, and your mom and dad was a place where we could go and, and hang out, and they enjoyed having us boys around. Amen. And we just thank you for them. Okay. That's right. Yeah. First of all, I was a was a wife to my dad. Uh, of course, mom of me and my two brothers, grandma, great grandma. Um, cook, seamstress, sew, do whatever she put her mind to, she could do. about anything that we did, you know, she was right there, right there with us. Um, I guess a couple of things she didn't do was shrimp to dear me. <laughs> um, but she cooked for us. And later on down the road, not too many months back, Told me one night we were sitting there and I said, what do you want for supper, Mama? She says, uh, I want a stew made with your meat. <coughs> and along and along when I would cook spaghetti or I would cook a stew or whatnot, you know, which you don't know will hurt you a lot of times, I'd make it with your meat or I'd make it with, you know, stew meat, but it would be venison. And she just gnawed in her thumb off cleaning the plate, you know. But she finally, she just, that, it just blew me away. So what did I do? I got it and I couldn't be a student. And, uh, but she did, her life was about us. With, uh, a lot of you in here old enough to remember. Back in the old days, if you made a telephone call, you just picked the phone up. And somebody on the other said, other end said, number please. Mm -hmm. Well, that was mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. And some of the other ladies here. Mm -hmm. and, um, of course, every once in a while, you pick the phone up and mm -hmm. You know, it would be number please, and you'd tell the number, and she'd say, okay, or you're connected, and then you know you could go and talk to them. But every <coughs> once in a while, I'd get the, Debbie, lay some hamburger meat out for supper. <laughs> <laughs> and I think back in the day, they even had a, the, the head operator would be walking around behind the other ladies sitting there at the switchboard, doing all the cable. She would slip that in, or why are you calling them, or whatever, you know. And then, of course, we got the phones with the dial on it, you know. It went from a three-digit number to a four-digit number. Oh, but she loved her family.
small part. Kind of added folding to the group. I appreciate all the friendship I've had throughout the years. Had the luxury of working with this year at the telephone company. She was our clerk. Finally, couldn't ask anybody any nicer. What I always enjoyed most was when she would, after she retired, and I got involved with the telephone cut five years, her and Mr. Ray always come to our meetings. Always enjoyed. But the best part about it was when you get to talking to them about it. How'd y'all meet? And things like that, the stories that she could tell about her and Mr. Ray and the decks and, and all the fun that they had growing up before the boys come along. But as far as her sons, as far as as far as this human is concerned, and it knows three fine fellows walk the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just ask. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And Randy worked at the telephone company, but as y'all can say, he wasn't built as an operator. <laughs> 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 he didn't do. He didn't stay and do the switchboard. He just kept it working. Anybody else? say something because you ain't going to get off no cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I was thinking this morning and Mama would have never called herself a quote unquote homemaker. She would have reminded me real fast, no, I go to work for a living, thank you very much. Um, but that's what Mama was. Mama was a homemaker with the word home and the connotation of family being so strong in that. Um, I can tell you as an adult raising children, I've, so many times I thought, what would mom and dad do? What would mom and dad do? Someone asked me earlier if I went to school on Doves and Brooks, and I said, yeah, oh yes. I went to school because I saw things that were done that should not be done, and I saw the repercussions of them, and I said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this crowd would, would make, is, I hate talking in past tense, this crowd makes mama happy. We got Gilbert's Park folks, we got telephone pioneer folks, we got folks from mom and dad's going and recording bands and knowing band directors. Um, somebody asked me a while ago and I said, she touched a lot of lives. And I look around the room and I know that each one of you represents the center point that we, we could create a spider web of people going out that she touched through you. Y'all have taken that and have gone on throughout the world. And uh, somebody asked me earlier, and I said, well, mom and daddy are probably getting the camera ready right now. Mm -hmm. Because if you knew them during that phase of their life, mm -hmm. they chunk the stuff into coachmen and go. You know, get that old black suburban hooked up to it and just go. And you might never know. Knock, knock, knock on the door. There's mom and dad dragging the camper with them. Hey, we're going to be around for a couple of days, you know. So park in the street, park in the side yard, go out there campground somewhere, but had a big time. Uh, my best friend, my senior year in high school, in reality, my best friend was my mom and dad because I got to do things band-wise. Uh, was fortunate enough to be selected to the Georgia All-State Band, one of the very best in the state, quote unquote, and that gave mom and dad such a sense of pride. As a I went on to become a band director, and I can tell you a great source of pride for me was seeing both of my children make all state band and play on the same stage that my mom and dad got to see me play on. So, the world is a circular path. What goes around comes around. That can be good or bad, as all of us in this room know. But I thank you on behalf of my mom and on behalf of my daddy. I appreciate so much being you all being here and taking time out of your busy lives and schedules to come pay respects to her because
forgot that there was anything wrong with the service. It was very bad. So thank you again for coming. Brooks? No. <laughs> Let's have prayer. Father, as we come before you today, we just praise your precious holy name. Lord, you blessed us all so much. Not only have you given us the things, Lord, that we need to survive here in this world, but God, <clears throat> when we look at the special blessings, Lord, our families, the parents, God, that you gave us and the examples that they set, Lord, the love that they taught us that we shared with our own children and grandchildren. And Lord, as it's already been said, I believe that uh, one of the greatest places, Lord, that we could go to as youngins was the Nuss house. I was thinking that one of the most precious things to my mother was a picture that Mr. Nuss made where Doug and I were playing ball and I had my uniform on and came around third base and I was just as barefooted as anybody could be. But Mama loved that picture and uh, Mr. Nuss made that. So God, as we go through this part of the service, God, I pray that you would help me to honor her and also Mr. Nuss and Father, this entire family. I believe that she would say that her, her friends and also that the kids' friends was also her family. So Lord, forgive me where I fail you. Forgive us. And it's in the sweet and holy name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I mentioned it in the prayer that many times uh, we think about Mr. Nuss already at home with the Lord and this Nuss is at home with the Lord too. And uh, we think about things and, and we forget. And I was sitting there wondering the other day, and how does a man from Charlottesville, Virginia, meet a girl from Jessup, Georgia? Of course, I know she was born in Odom, but I think she was raised in Jessup. So things happen in our world today that only God knows how He puts people together. But I believe that Mr. and Miss Nuss would say the same thing that I say, and Mr. Nuss would say that he married the only perfect woman in the world. See, my wife is perfect for me. No doubt that this nest was perfect for Mr. Ness. And I think about the scripture and it tells us that uh, I don't see very well, so I have to bend over a lot to read. It says, uh, For this call shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twine shall be one flesh. It's amazing to me that God can take two people that are totally opposite and even put them together and, and over the years as they live together and as they mature and, and they face all the hardships of the world but also share the joys that no longer is it two people. It's one. And I know that I can uh, get tickled at the... Uh, things that I've seen on TV, but my wife will look at me and like the commercial said, she'll say, you don't feel well today, do you? And uh, I say, yeah, I'm doing good. She'll say, no, the way you answered that, you don't feel good today, do you? Well, between having an open heart surgery and all those restented and four strokes, I feel great. God has blessed me beyond anything. And it's tied up in family. It's tied up in friends. It's tied up in every now and then I'll ease back out. Well, I don't anymore. I'm not allowed to drive. But I would go back out to Gilchrist Park and, and just ride around the neighborhood. And the old house we lived in is gone now. But I'd ride by Doug's house and I'd ride by the other people's homes. And, and God would just help me to recall all the special times that we had together. And as I think about uh, two becoming one, I, I used to pastor one of the last churches that I was able to pastor was Astoria Baptist Church out in Jacksonville Highway. And, and uh, when I first took the church, uh, my chairman of the church said, I know you're going to get out and go visit, but stay away from the lady that lives in front of me. You're not going to be welcome there. I said, okay, I understand. Where do you think the first place was I went? 
Well, she opened the door and, and she was really nice to me. And I asked her, I said, can me and my wife come back and visit with you? She said, I guess. You think you have to. So we started visiting with her and, and uh, her husband had died a couple of years before that and he was a strong Christian in the church. But she wouldn't have anything to do with it. Or I know she'd never been there. But she was raised in Gilbert's Park, so maybe she went to one of those. But uh, one day she showed up for church. And of course the only thing I did was tell her how much I appreciated it. I didn't push her or anything, but she started coming every Sunday. And then one day she walked the aisle of the church and got saved. And the next Sunday night we were having baptism. She walked out there and we were fixing to go to the baptism booth. She had on a long white t-shirt. And I looked at her, she said, now this white t-shirt was John's. And I'm going to wear it tonight. I said, that's fine. She said, this ring I got on this chain right here, that was John's wedding band. She said, preacher, do you think John knows that I got saved? I said, well, I can't prove it, but nobody can disprove it. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be nice if John and Jesus was standing there watching you tonight? Not only come to know the Lord, but to be baptized. And she, tears rolling down her eyes, she said, all the years since John died, I sure wished I'd have come to know the Lord. It would have made him so happy. So uh, I thought about as I looked through that that many, many times that's the way it is in our families. You know, a lot of times the woman gets saved and normally it's the woman that gets saved and sooner or later maybe she can get that husband by the hair and drag him down the aisle and uh, help him to get saved. As a matter of fact, my wife was an instrument that God used for me to come to know the Lord. The Bible tells us that uh, we are confident, I say, and without, excuse me, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Well, last Wednesday night, uh, Miss Nuss experienced that. She took her last breath here. She was with the Lord. Now the body may still be there, but the soul is not. Her spirit's not. And uh, I want to tell you another story, and I thought this will really tell you about this and really about our families. There used to be a story, and it went uh, where one of the pastors, uh, years ago, they would get on a circuit, they would go from one town to the next, and they wouldn't be home for maybe five or six months at the time. So the name of the story is called The Heavenly Port uh, Porter. And living out in Gilchrist Park, we may have heard a train or two somewhere down the line, but the porter, we all know what they were. On the train, they were the ones that took care of the people. So the uh, old evangelist, he gets on the train and he starts heading home, and, and the porter wanted to know if there was anything he could do for him, and, and the guy said, well, where, where is my bunk? And he showed him, and, and the Guy took him, the porter took him and showed him where it was and he said, in the morning we'll be serving breakfast at such and such a time over uh, in the car. And uh, so the guy went to sleep and the next morning he got up and his suit was clean, pressed, and everything just hanging up there by his bed. So he got up and, and on the way to eat, he bumped into the porter again and told him how much he appreciated it. And he said, you know, I haven't been home in a long time. And he said, uh, I just wonder if anybody knows that I'm coming home. And the porter told him, says, well, I'm going to tell you, when we round that corner to go up to the town where you live, I believe some God will be there waiting on. So they came up and, and he got by the window and they came around that last curve and the place was just full of people. Well, I want to tell you a little something about heaven. Now, in heaven, I believe, and it's through times of being with people when they went on home to be with the Lord, my mom, and a bunch of other people, and there's something really unique and special about that time. 
We've seen people that struggle through pain like my dad did when he passed away. We've seen people that went peacefully like my mother did while we were praying. I said, Mom, if Jesus is here, go with him. And she looked at me and went, that was it. So we see all kinds of things, but the, the preacher saw all these people to welcome him. You think it might could be that way in heaven? We got a heavenly order. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's went with us and he has furnished everything that we ever really need here in this world. And he has guaranteed us that heaven holds something for us that is far beyond our imagination. I don't know about y'all, but I long to be there. I long to be in heaven with my Lord. And I believe, Doug, that last Wednesday, when your mama got to heaven, there may have been mama, grandma, Mr. Nuss. There may have been a lot of people there to welcome her. But the most important one that will welcome us when we get to heaven is called Jesus. Jesus. And a lot of times we need to understand that Mr. and Mrs. and us had made their plans for many years to be there. To be there together. And I believe that they gave the boys and, and, and all opportunities to know the Lord. I don't know how many people took it. I don't know how many grandchildren took it. Our great grandchildren took that opportunity to come to the Lord. But I know this, as long as you're taking a breath of air, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God right now is wooing you in your heart to come to Jesus. When I got saved years ago, matter of fact, it was uh, in 1976. Uh, and the preacher made one statement that just floored me. I mean, it for me. I, I was a bad boy. I was driving a beer truck for a living. I had a homemade draft machine. Came home from work about a week before that, and my wife somehow or another got that draft beer machine to the back door and pushed that sucker out the yard. <laughs> now, that's a mean woman if I ever seen one. That's not the only time she's ever threatened to you. <sighs> and uh, so what I would do, I would start going to church with her. She'd come and she'd say, Marla, will you go to church with me? I said, no, no, not today. And then finally it came to a place I'd say, well, you and the kids go ahead to Sunday school. Well, I'm going to walk around there. Well, it was about four blocks. So guess what time I had to leave to walk around to the church for church? Two or three minutes after they left. Now that's, uh, we could say that's ignorance, but it wasn't ignorance. You know, ignorance is not a bad word. Ignorance is a word that can be cured. All we got to do is learn. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge, but now stupidity. I think I kind of fit that category. But I started going with them. And one day, Brother Charles got at Calvary Baptist Church. He said, is there anybody here that's tired of living the life that they're living today. The only thing I remember was picking up my left foot. The next thing I knew, I was right in front of him. I was tired of living the life that I lived. Mr. and Miss and us, they, they set a, a standard for all of us out in Gilbert's Park. And I'm sure they set a standard for these boys, no matter how the three of them turned out. Well, I wasn't supposed to say that part, was I? <laughs> you know, I think about the fact, life didn't over. Life didn't over. It didn't over when you take your last breath. Now, we can go to heaven and see these people, or we can go somewhere else and never see our friends, relatives, or Christians. Is there anybody here that's tired of living the life that they live? 
I'm even asking that to Christians. Christians, are you tired of living the kind of life that you live? Because Christians are sinners too. Saved by grace. Christians make bad mistakes sometimes. But God still forgives us if we repent. So think about it that uh, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If there's anybody here that may be about to take their last breath, as Sister Ness did, you know the Lord, everything's okay. Everything's okay. The good thing about Jesus is as the Holy Spirit works, we all got an opportunity. If uh, Mr. and Miss Ness was here today, guys, girls, all you Gilchrist Park people, what do you think they would say to us? Both of them going home be with the Lord. But if they came back and could tell us anything that they wanted to tell us, what do you think they would share? Do you think they would try to tell us just how beautiful heaven was? You know the Bible tells us that Paul, John the Baptist, or not John the Baptist, but the Apostle John. They went to heaven and saw it and then they came back to earth. And one thing I believe with all my heart, it is so beautiful there is no words to describe it. Now why would we want to miss out on that? What is the prettiest place y'all ever been to? They love to camp. They love to get that uh, camper fired up like James was talking about. And I'll bet you they had a good time They'd be sitting around and maybe Miss Nuss would say, we ain't seen James in a while, let's go. I don't know, which one do you think would say that, Mr. or Miss Nuss? Who was the boss in that family? My wife is and ours, and I don't mind it at all. I got a wife, I got two daughters, I got three great granddaughters, I got four great great granddaughters, I'm making no decisions in our family at all. <laughs> And I like it like that. I don't make nearly as many mistakes. But I'm going to tell you, this for Miss Nuss knew somebody that made absolutely perfect decisions. That's cool, isn't it? Isn't that cool? Now, I, I, I got the uh, personality of somebody of the 70s. Okay? Graduated when, in 1967. One day I was standing in the church and uh, one of the pastors came in behind me. It was 12 o'clock at night. I didn't think anybody was around there. And I was standing there and I had prayer. I said, Jesus, you are so cool. And I said, what did you say? And I said, my God is so cool. He is. They're perfect. They're perfect. They have no flaws. Everything about them is perfect. I won't be. What do you think they would say? I'm going to challenge y'all sometime during the day to think on that. Think on that. Is there a quality that they had that you wish you had? You know, we could have a pretty good discussion about that. I'd like to have a dollar for every woman that went through that house. They were so nice to all of us. God was in their hearts. So I know this sounds more like a salvation message, and I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I love Jesus with all my heart. They did. And I hope that you Imagine after we close with this prayer, that would probably give somebody else an opportunity to say something. And, and uh, don't be bashful. We need uh, to lift up those people that set examples for us to live by. Maybe some of them put it off on us. Let's pray. Father, as uh, we get ready, Lord, to 
maybe go home. I pray that everything that's been said is uplifting to you that praises your name and also maybe a little bit of justice to Mr. and Ms. Nuts. They took care of all of us. They loved us. They allowed us to play ball. And Mr. and Miss Nuts was like my mom. I don't think my mama ever missed a ball game, Lord. She loved her children, and Mr. and Miss Nuts loved theirs. Lord, touch the grandchildren, the spouses, the great grandchildren. And Lord, let them know through James, Brooks, and the Doug, that a standard was set a long time ago by Mr. and Ms. Ness. Lord, I give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for all things. And I pray above all things that I have lifted you up and how much you, Lord, love us. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen.